Welcome. In this video we look at section 7.2 and we finish it up. Today is day 2 of 2. We will focus on graph algorithms and spanning trees. Graph algorithms and spanning trees. So in any connected graph we can find a spanning tree. For example, here we go, I'll outline it in red there. So that what's outlined in red, that is a tree, and every vertex in the entire graph is included in that tree. In fact, there are typically many choices for spanning trees. Let G be a simple connected graph. The subgraph T is a spanning tree of G if T is a tree and every node in G is a node in T. They're pretty easy to construct. All you need to do is start with some graph G, find a cycle in G and remove an edge from the cycle, and then repeat until no more cycles can be found. Here's an example. Say I start with this graph on the right, which has lots and lots of cycles, and I just start removing them. So I see an edge up there I can remove. I'll re remove that, and some edges are over here. I'm just kind of randomly going around. If I see a cycle, I'll remove an edge. Oh, there's a cycle of four there. I'll remove one of those edges. Uh, this whole thing is a cycle. Maybe I'll remove one edge there. Remove. Remove. Any others? Oh. And then here's a cycle. Remove one of those edges. And I think that's it. I've removed all the possible cycles. And so what, what remains is a connected graph that has no cycles. And that is a tree. We typically want a minimal spanning tree. In a weighted graph, which spanning tree has the least total weight? When I talk about a weighted graph, what I'm really talking about is putting numbers on the edges. And those numbers on edges are called weights. So this graph here might represent the cost to travel from point D to point B, uh, 10 units, for, or from B to A, it's 20 units of cost to get there. So perhaps you're building roads, and these are the costs for constructing roads. Um, in this particular graph, what is my minimal spanning tree? Well, I have to include the 10. And then I could go across to the 30 and the 40. That's a spanning tree, and the total cost of that looks like 80. But that's not quite the minimal one. Here's something else. I could go up to the 20 and down. So there's another spanning tree, and that cost is 70. But I think the minimal one happens right there. So now in, in red I've made a, a spanning tree and this cost is 60. So that's the minimal spanning tree. Now minimal spanning trees might not be unique. You might have several minimal spanning trees. If some of these weights are the same that could certainly cause different minimal spanning trees to exist. Now Prim's algorithm is an algorithm for finding a minimal spanning tree in any simple connected graph. In the example I had up here, it's pretty easy to do it by hand, but for larger graphs, it'd be nice to have a step-by-step -step method that guarantees the production of a minimal spanning tree. Consider this graph. So certain towns in south central Pennsylvania and some company is going to lay cable from town to town and the cable all has to be connected and here's the cost in millions of dollars to lay cable from one town to another. So what is the minimal spanning tree? How can I connect all of these places with the least total cost? So we'll use Prim's algorithm to find a minimal spanning tree. Here's how it works. First, pick any node, say Carlisle for example. That's your starting tree. So it really is just that point, that single node with no edges, that's my starting tree. Now I identify candidate edges. These are edges where one vertex is on the tree and the other isn't. So for example, the edge that has weight 2.9, that is a candidate edge. And I have this one. So it looks like I have four different candidate edges. All right. Now I grow the tree by choosing the cheapest candidate. So among these four choices, it looks like the one from Carlisle to Harrisburg is the cheapest. So we grow the tree. We include that edge. All right. Now let's identify new candidates. My tree now consists of one edge. And so I look at all the possible edges connecting to that. There we go. So it looks like there are four candidates that I can use to grow the tree. 
grow the tree, I have to identify the cheapest one. So maybe it's this 2.2. So here we go. Grow the tree. Identify new candidates. Now, pretty similar to before, but look at this. Previously, I had the edge that was weight 2.3. This time, I can't include that as a candidate. It would make a cycle. Um, and the, the, the trick is one vertex has to be on the tree and the other has to be not on the tree to avoid making cycles. So what candidates do I have? I have that one, I have the 4.1, I also have the 4.7. So four candidates here. The cheapest one looks like the 2.9. All right, so we'll grow that one. And we continue this process on and on and on. The next thing, I'll, let's say I identify candidates. There's one, there's one. Looks like I have three candidate edges, and the cheapest of all those is the 1.2. So I will grow that. And at this point, I've reached all the vertices uh, by growing this tree vertex by vertex. And so I know that I have a spanning tree. And Prim's algorithm guarantees that this is, in fact, a minimal spanning tree. Here's another example of Prim's algorithm. I got this from the Wikipedia webpage. A nice animation showing the application of Prim's algorithm. Here are a bunch of nodes, and we don't actually see the edges between all of them, but the idea is that we're using actual distance as the weight. So nodes that are very close together have a very small weight. Nodes that are very far apart from each other have a very big weight. And it looks like the node that we start on is actually going to be this one. So the first step is actually already done. They picked the node and they grew the shortest edge, which is going to be right there. And now the tree is growing. At every stage, they look for the node that is closest to the currently existing tree. Oh, we'll do that one more time. So we grow the tree at every stage, looking for the node that's closest to the existing tree. There we go. So it's kind of cool. We end up with a spanning tree. And in this case, this is a minimal spanning tree. It's a tree that connects all the vertices together, and it does it with the least total possible distance. Let's see a proof for Prim's algorithm. So we'll, we'll see that it actually produces a minimal spanning tree. So imagine I have some graph G here on the right. And I'm building these, this tree by Prim's algorithm. And let T sub I be the, the tree produced by Prim's algorithm after I steps. So at stage 0, this is T sub 0. And then T1, T2 t3, t4, t5, and so on. I grow the tree and however many edges I have, that's the, that's the stage i. So we will prove that each t sub i is contained in a minimal spanning tree of g. So if I can show that this is true, so t1 is contained in a minimal spanning tree, t2, t3, all the way up to the very end, well then the, the final result, which is a spanning tree itself, must be a minimal spanning tree of g. All right, so this is a proof by induction. The base case says, well let's consider t sub 0, just the single vertex. Well, it's in, a, it's in every spanning tree, because every spanning tree has to include all the vertices, so we're done. So certainly, this T sub 0 is in a minimal spanning tree as well. Now let's assume that T sub m minus 1 is in a minimal spanning tree u of g. So what we see here, let's call that T sub m minus 1, and this is the stage where I know that it's definitely in a minimal spanning tree. So here's the, here's the minimal spanning tree. I'll grow that out. And we just kind of imagine that this u is a minimal spanning tree for all of g, and it just so happens to include that stage t sub m minus 1. That's our induction hypothesis. So let e be the edge that we add to t sub m minus 1 to produce t sub m. So I'm going to use Prim's algorithm now on this existing uh, structure, these five edges, 
and I'm going to make a new edge E that gets connected to uh, the existing tree. Well, there are two cases. Case one, the new edge that I add, it could actually be in that existing U. So here we go, I'll, I'll grow that. It could be that edge right there, which was in that minimal spanning tree U. Well, then the T sub M, that's the green and blue together, that T sub M is in that minimal spanning tree. And we're done. We've shown that you know, at, at stage M minus one, it was we knew it was in a minimal spanning tree, and then at stage M, it's also in a minimal spanning tree. Well, that was the first case. The second case is a little bit longer. What happens if that new edge that I add onto the tree is not actually in the minimal spanning tree under consideration? Okay, so remove that guy. Maybe the new edge that's added by Prim's algorithm isn't actually part of the minimal spanning tree that I'm thinking of. So what do I need to do? Well, notice this. There is a path in U from the node on E that is not in T sub M minus one to some vertex in T sub M minus one. Okay, here's what I mean by that. This edge E, let's take the, the far node on that. So this guy right there. Somehow there's a path that connects that node back to the tree that I'm growing, the T sub M minus one. So there it is right there. I've been able to connect back to my existing tree. And this is because it's a span, U is a spanning tree. So I have to be able to connect all of my nodes together somehow. So certainly there's a path that goes back to the T sub M minus one. Now let F be the last edge on that path. So here we go. F is actually this guy right here. Now by Prim's algorithm, the weight of edge E is less than or equal to the weight of edge F, right? Because at this stage, M minus one, I had this tree and Prim's algorithm told me to add edge E. So certainly E can't be a heavier weight than F. If F was less, then I would have just chosen F as my, as my next edge. Now it could be that E and F have the same weight and maybe E was just chosen randomly. But at least I know that the weight of E has to be less than or equal to the weight of F. Now, on the other hand, let's try this little experiment. Let's create a new spanning tree, U prime. And I'm gonna do this in a curious way. I'm gonna take my current U and I will add edge E and subtract edge F. So here we go, I'll add edge E in there. And that creates a cycle, but then I subtract F and now I still have a tree again. So it's connected, but there's no cycles. So, and I've relabeled this U prime. So U prime looks like U, except I've added E and I've subtracted F. Well, this U prime is a, is a spanning tree. I don't know that it's minimal, but at least it is a spanning tree. And in fact, the, the weight of U, the total weight of all the edges of U, has to be less than or equal to the total weight of U prime, because in fact, U is a minimal spanning tree. There is no other spanning tree that has a smaller weight. So the weight of U is less than or equal to the weight of U prime. But the only difference was those two edges, F and E. So in fact, the weight of F must be less than or equal to the weight of E. So look at this. On the one hand, I have weight of F is less than or equal to the weight of E. On the other hand, I have the weight of E is less than or, e or equal to the weight of F. And so I conclude that in fact, those two things must have the same weight. So this new U prime that I constructed is in fact also a minimal spanning tree. It's a different one from the one that I started off with, but it is still a minimal spanning tree. And the U prime actually contains the, the, the new generation of the tree that I'm growing with Prim's algorithm. T sub M, which now includes E, is contained in U prime. U prime is a minimal spanning tree. And so finally, there we go. That is the end of the proof. There's one more algorithm to show, and this is called Kruskal's algorithm. This is another algorithm for finding a minimal spanning tree. Don't worry, I will just go through a demonstration. We won't actually do a proof for Kruskal's algorithm. Here's how this one works. I'm gonna list all the edges by their cost in increasing order. So there we go. 
And I'm going to start stepping through these from least to greatest. And I'm, I'm going to start including them in my tree. But I don't want to create a cycle. Let me show you how this works. So first, I look at 0 0.8. Is this in my graph? Oh, there's 0 0.8 right there. So I will include that. All right, check. Now let's take a look at the 1.2 edge. Where is that? Oh, 1.2. There it is. Can I include that without causing a new cycle to create? Uh, yes, I can. Let's include that one. There we go. 1.2 is included. Next. 2.2. Can I include 2.2 without creating a cycle? I think so. Let's try that one. We'll include that. 2.2. Check. How about 2.3? Here's the edge 2.3. Can I include 2.3 without creating a cycle? No, I can't. So I don't want to include the 2.3. So I'll erase that, I'll put a little X, and I'll move on to the next edge. How about the 2.9? Where's 2.9? There's 2.9. Uh, it looks like I can include that without making a cycle, so include the 2.9. And in fact, at this point, I realize that I have a spanning tree, and I'll stop. And look at this, it's the same minimal spanning tree that I got with Prim's algorithm, which should kind of make sense. If there if there is only one minimal spanning tree, then Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm will give us the same results. All right, let's look at another demonstration of Kruskal's algorithm. Here we go again. This is the same graph from before, where all the nodes are visible, the, the edges between them aren't, but the weights on the edges are the actual distance between nodes. So Kruskal's algorithm, here we go, it's looking at all possible pairs of nodes, and it's joining those that are very close together. And so this is kind of cool, right? We're not growing a tree. We're just picking edge by edge by edge, picking the very smallest edges that I can. And sometimes, oh, you see now there's some experimenting. It's finding things that would create a cycle, but it can't accept those. All right, we'll go through it one more time. All right, and that's the end result of Kruskal's algorithm. And in fact, if you remember, this is actually the same end result that we got with Prim's algorithm on this set of points. We've seen some interesting things in this lesson. Spanning trees, minimal spanning trees, and two algorithms for finding these trees.